Say anything. Say anything you want, man. We're an open. It's an open forum. Should we, uh, I can say anything should we address I want? the uh, the allegations? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Bobby Sheehan has lost his mind, and we had to commit him to an insane asylum. Mm. I am two for two on podcasts, but yes. uh, that's why you guys brought Dalton back. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Dalton, you've changed a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Bobby if he like started drinking again. Yeah. So we uh we have a rule that only people who Joe has had sex with are allowed to speak on the podcast. That's right. <laughs> so I mean, ladies and gentlemen, my fiance, <laughs> Kelly Taylor Gorman. What's Kelly up Taylor everybody? <laughs> That's so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I am so like honestly so excited to be on the pod. Yeah, Bobby Welcome. has COVID. Breaking the That's fourth right. wall. How He's the fuck did he get? How did he get that shit? Probably in the that. insane asylum. How does how does fucking how how does one get that in in 2022? I don't know. It's monkeypox time now. If you're still getting COVID, yeah. attack. Yeah. <laughs> well, but Matt, Ke- you're next. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kelly, would you hyphenate your last name when you get married? Oh man, it, it haunts my dreams every day. I think about this. <laughs> yeah. Um, does it depend on the last name? Are there some last names where you would and some where you wouldn't? Totally. I think okay. that rule totally applies. I feel like for me, I've been Kelly Taylor for so long, too long, you yeah. might say. <laughs> um, and I don't. Gorman, Gorman is just such what a if, basic uh, bitch name. What you know? if uh, What if I went by my uh, my my Christian name, Garofalo? Is that really <laughs> your Christian name? Yeah, Joe. You got a Christian last name, Joe Garofalo. I think he's just obsessed with Janine Garofalo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just fucking. Or you, oh, anymore. well, the San Francisco 49ers quarterback is Jimmy Garoppolo, and you are from the Bay Area. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no one else knows that. Man. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. I what don't about know. your Japanese name? Do you, Hongo. What, what was it? Is, it was Hongo. Hongo? Uh, I mean, that's what my grandmother's maiden name. Fuck, Sounds don't like talk to yeah. <laughs> <talks> <laughs> my fucking 95-year-old grandmother. It was Hongo? Yeah. It Thank sounds, God she doesn't yeah. have an email address. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just sounds like an Asian person trying to say they're hungry. Yeah. Hungle. Or hung, like very hung. hung. Mm. Kelly, what was your, uh, what's your ancestry? Um, Any Japanese? Yeah, she got a little in her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. God you damn. did my first one. Wow. Um, Joe's the first Asian you've been with? Yeah. It feels like a <laughs> cop out, though. Yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm in, my pussy's inclusive, but yeah. you have to be like very white Mixed. presenting. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I am Irish and Polish. Yikes. Okay. Yeah, it's very, very basic, you know. Yeah. That I must mean, have been why you were so upset about um, everything that, that's going on in the Ukraine. <laughs> Was I upset about that? Yeah, you're always crying. <laughs> My eyes are actually watering right now. I know, thinking about the Ukraine. Yeah, every, the Ukraine. Every, to- every time Kelly's crying because Joe doesn't love her, he's like, oh, there she goes about the Ukraine again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I told you, babe, until... As l- until Zelensky's safe, I can't. I can't do anything <laughs> romantic. <laughs> now all that brave comedian is yeah. fighting for his country. Yes, that's <laughs> the one thing we can relate to. Yeah, I mean, all comedians are brave if you think about it. Not all comedians. I you think, think so. N- you think Nanette is brave? Oh, so brave. Yeah, the why? bravest. Yeah. <laughs> why? What did they do? She's fighting a war against the patriarchy. She's fighting a That's war against... That's way more impressive she, than she's Russia. She's fighting a war against them damn pants, all right? They <laughs> <laughs> I know that oh, this, look has, at this. this has been said... This is Petra. This has been said a few times by multiple female comics, but something that was so um, insulting was multiple people coming up to me being like, did you see Nanette? You'd love it. And yeah. I'm like, oh my God. Oh, what am I... What yeah. am I giving off to the world? As if, as like if she were allowed to watch that kind right, of thing. Right, <laughs> Come on, man. What, kind, like of boyfriend, version- what kind of boyfriend do you think I am, America? Yeah. <laughs> Letting her watch Radicalized Nanette. It's like your version of when the movie The Wrestler came out and everyone came out to me like, I have such a new respect for you. I'm oh like, you God. didn't respect me before? <laughs> I, I respected that scene where Mickey Rourke intentionally cut his thumb so he could leave work. I was like, that's oh, fucking God. genius. <laughs> like, this is like the most brilliant man. Of course, dude, if you fucking hurt yourself at work, you can go home. Workers comp. Yeah. Can you imagine that fucking scene where he hurts his thumb and instead of wrestling, he just goes home and plays like four hours of Fortnite? Yeah. That would be me. <laughs> I'm just bleeding over my controller, but I'm like, mm. fuck you, America. Matt, yes. would you be a doll and open up that drawer? I think I need a... An, oh, yes. Let me get that napkin. Yes. Oh, lovely. Mm. Thank you. Deck cards, I too. Got, 
Anyone Mascara want to see some magic head. tricks on the podcast? Yeah, what else? Get, yeah, as you can see, I have <laughs> now nothing. Now I've got him going. I have nothing up or on my sleeves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I would have been a good magician just because the whole my whole gimmick could just be I have nothing up my sleeves. That, would, that, <laughs> that should be the title of your special. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Dude, it's now never that, too late. Yeah, dude. Well, now that the amazing Jonathan's dead, RIP, you can uh, take his place. As, I can be the next comedy magician. Well, his fucking thing was like he was like a good magician, but he was also fucking funny. He was very funny. Like, you can have like magicians that are kind of witty, but mostly magicians or comedians that could do sleight of hand, but he could do both. And, yeah. And, and that's why I give him a pass for doing crack on film. Yeah. <laughs> How fucking that cool was, is that? That was so cool. That was keeping him alive. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's like um, was Magic Johnson had AIDS and then outlived it because he's rich. Mason Jonathan had whatever the thing he had was. He was like a year to live. And then <laughs> well, he, had, he, he was made it five more years. Well, he was dying from crack. That's what it was? No, I think it was cancer. I think it was stomach cancer. I don't maybe. know what they said the disease was. Mm. That was it's probably AIDS, and he was so ashamed of it. Yeah. Isn't it who always? knows? If you know who killed Amazing Jonathan, let us know. Well, gang, looks like we got a mystery on our hands. You're right. We do. How, how <laughs> did Amazing Jonathan... Somebody <laughs> infected him, like Eazy-E. He got, yeah. he got fucking infected. He got infected. stabbed with yeah. the AIDS needle. Is I'm, that true, or is that a, a conspiracy Well, theory? what's his face said it on uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live? Uh, Suge Knight. Suge Knight like said he infected Easy E on uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Right, uh, but is that a uh, real thing or that's something that I wonder? Where um, like all the stuff we know about history is just like a historian wrote it, and I wonder yeah. if it was just <laughs> like oh, <laughs> dogs are going You're fucking nuts. Such dude. a fucking bitch is. <laughs> Is Finny bleeding because she got his face bad? Yeah. Folks, I if you... Uh, You're such a fucking sub bitch. Subscribe to the Patreon for the full dog fight here. <laughs> How fucking cool is that? My, my side yeah. hustle. Yeah. Yeah, my fucking we side We gotta add hustle. a new tier, the Michael Vick tier. Yeah, who do you got? This little dog or that little dog? Mm. My money's on Petra every time because she is vicious. Yeah, but... I didn't realize this was Patreon. No, no it's this not. Is tomorrow's. Um, uh, tomorrow's Patreon. Don't worry, baby. I'm letting I'm letting the world no, see no, you. No, no. On the Patreon I, I, is where they get the full dog fight. I thought yeah. <laughs> this was just a preview. Yeah. This is what is this is like the weigh ins where the fighters like get in each other's face. Yeah. And it was like, get them the hell away from each other. Yeah. Is Finn okay? That he's, was the pose he's down. Fine. Yeah, he's he's, he's chilling. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. We'll give him a little weed after the show. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what were you saying, Matt? I don't remember. I don't remember either. Kelly, now that you're on the podcast, I want you for our listeners to defend dipping fries in Frosty. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll defend anything that is like superbly trash because that's where I come from. I was born in it. I know it. And we know. Um, <laughs> salty fries in, in, in Frosties. It's just, it's so delicious. It's the merging of savory and sweet. It's... It's it. What are other things that are like popular merging of savory and sweet? Because I feel like I like savory things and I like sweet things, but I don't really oh, have a fried put them ice cream. Yeah, I haven't done fried that Fried Oreos. Ever. I had fried Oreos once and they were better than I thought they would be. They're way yeah, good. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. The McGriddle is the crown oh, jewel yeah. Yeah. of savory and sweet. I don't what know. The fry, fries and frosty always I felt mean, like a baby thing. Are you, do let's, you like let's corn go, dogs? Let's go to the invention of yeah. savory and sweet the glazed ham. Glazed ham. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I just don't eat. I, like, I'm trashy also. But the fries and frosty thing always felt like. But you're uh, trashy Jewish. It's yeah, different. that's true. Trashy Catholic is like. Mm. What about uh, what, uh, the Hawaiian pizza where that has uh, pineapple and ham on a pizza? I haven't had that before. I'm allergic to pineapple. So Thank God. Trying to kill me. Mm. Isn't that what you eat to make your sperm taste good? Sometimes. Or Wait. if you want to poison your girlfriend, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, any way out is fine. Yeah. No, I, um, yeah, I guess, because, uh, I mean, I'm not religious Jewish, but I think it's, my mom's side of the family is Russian Jewish, and it's just culturally so Jewish. So you're Jewish. I'm Jewish, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so... I was going to say, because uh, your last name was Hungo. My dad, my grandfather's last name was Marangopoulos on the Greek Ooh. side of my family. Russian last names aren't that. My mom, I think, it was yeah. like Weil and Wiener. I think my mm. maternal last name was uh, O'Gorman, and they just dropped the O when they got okay. to Okay. O'Gorman. Yeah. What now, about, what, is yeah. Taylor just Taylor? Yeah, Taylor's just Taylor, because I said uh, I'm Irish and Polish, but it's um, Irish because both my grandparents on my mom's side came over from, from Ireland, but the um, Polish side is only a quarter, so I just sort of have this mystery American quarter, mm. which I don't think I'm, I should even say these you're days. You're part native. 
No. Oh, 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 um, yeah. I'm definitely po- no, she's part, part Nazi. Wrong oh. side of the wrong side of history for mm. sure. Because it's like everyone's Southern on as the well. If you go back far enough, nobody is not on the wrong side no, of totally. history. Yeah. Um, so it's Taylor like, is just Taylor. Yeah, it's interesting when you learn about uh, if you ever study any ancient history, they talk about things so casually that today we consider people evil for doing. Which is like King Ramses was the greatest pharaoh in Egypt because he expanded the territory. I'm like, oh, he was an imperialist. Yeah. But we just look at it as he's the most successful pharaoh of all time, and yeah. he's King Ramses. And it's like if he, if anyone did anything like what he did in the last hundred years, their statue would have to be taken out. We need to tear down the pyramids. Is what I'm saying. History is written by the winners, dude. Yeah, we only tear down too. the statues of the losers. Yeah. Well, and we so- want to tear down like George Washington's statue, even though he had slaves. Uh, some people have tried to like take oh, down, but like people would be like, "No, that's it's, it." Seems more people are against it than are for. But there is like people try to take down Lincoln statues in like the city of Lincoln. Well, that's different. He essentially like stole property from all of the slave owners <laughs> by, true, by doing yeah. the emancipation. That guy's a thief. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was because I stole future generations from slaveholders yeah. too. Well, they were like, tearing it yeah. down because he'd given speeches where he said um, he was trying to appease the South where he would say, I'm not going to take your slaves. I'm not saying that black men yeah. are better than white men. White men are still clearly better, but let's just not expand slavery out West. And then he eventually oh, yeah. got rid of slavery. Yeah. It's, like when that, it's like when that other loser was like, oh, take the vaccine. They won't kill mm. you. Hey, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. And and, and yeah. now, look, people are dying right. from the fucking vaccine. This, this <laughs> fucking guy can't even ride a bike. I hope somebody shoots him in the face, whoever this person is I'm Joe wants to about. make sure the episode with his girlfriend is not allowed on YouTube. Come on, don't <laughs> say that, dude. Anything to sabotage me. I had a dog fight. I had back. a threat on the uh, fucking president. <laughs> Anti-vax. We, yeah, we got everything. This this one is like the most YouTube of our podcast yeah. so far. Do you man, think- we got fucking dogs fighting each <laughs> other, man. I ain't, you know, Joe Biden's a goddamn idiot, man. I won't kill the damn president, man. We should have a Confederate flag hanging yeah. behind oh, us. Oh, God. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I got my I got my bitch here, man. Well, yeah. Let me tell you something, man. Hey, ain't no one making us get a goddamn abortion. I'll tell you that goddamn. She leaves much. halfway through and comes back with a plate of biscuits. <laughs> Damn, that'd be great, man. We have fucking country fried biscuits with mm. fucking gravy. Yeah, how great would that be? Pretty sick. It's kind of hot today for that, though. Yeah, it is a hot. It's a hot one. Ninety six. Yeah, it's almost. Been 90s it's it's all week. two two degrees short of a boy band. Yeah. <laughs> Who was your favorite boy band? Um, who would be my favorite? Let's ask boy some girl band? questions. Who's your favorite boyfriend? Who, who who's the favorite cutest? boy band? Um, I'm trying to think of ones that I know. Of. Like, there's like Backstreet Boys is like an obvious one. They're like the Beatles of the fucking boy band. You know, yeah. I just saw Backstreet Boys on Tuesday yeah. at PNC Bank Art Center. Oh shit! Yeah. And it's one of those things where, okay, so I really wasn't allowed to listen to pop music as a kid because the devil music. My dad, like, like I wasn't allowed to listen or watch the Spice Girls movie because my dad was like, you're going to turn into a whore. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, fucking, uh, what was it? Uh, Ginger Spice was in Playboy. Mm. Took me 20 years to finally see those pictures. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway, so I went to a Backstreet Boys concert, like, of course, knowing them, but not really of being a, a true, like for as successful and like crazy as girls got about them, I really didn't. And I didn't have that uh, same love for like in sync, so I went yeah. just You're to like go. A little bit younger than the t- the youngest of their target. Because my guess. sister was like a Backstreet Boys fan, and yeah, yeah, you're a little, you're a little younger than so her. So, right? at that was, age, it really mattered. You were really more, matters. you were more in sync. No, I really wasn't either. Oh, because you couldn't listen to pop music. Not that I couldn't listen to pop music. I definitely couldn't listen to the to the S- S- Spice Girls for sure. Um, well, they were too edgy. They were way too hoary. Yeah. Oh, yeah if you want to be, if you want to be my lover, you got to fuck my friends. That's the lyrics, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's you know at the time. I mean, no, I'm still mad at my dad about that. But um, um, I don't know. I was, yeah, Hanson and like yeah, New Kids Hansen. on the Block was like the first that, one. I was way too yeah. young. Yeah, New I was Kids too on young the for New that. Kids on the Block was out when I was in like preschool. So I don't yeah. even know how the fuck you guys would know about that. Yeah, I, I don't even yeah. know if my parents had met each other at that like, point. At that point, like New Kids on the Block were like over, and they thought mm. like, oh, okay, this boy band was like oh, because like, they had like New Kids on the Block. They had Menudo. Yeah, and that was like it. I remember being into like like Aaron Carter wasn't a band, I was but into he Aaron was Carter. yeah. He beat Shaq. He beat Shaq. Yeah, that's crazy. He wanted candy. Yeah, <laughs> he wanted candy. And now he does crack. 
Now he does crack. He really does crack, and he has an OnlyFans, doesn't he? I don't does know. Does he? He has lots of face tattoos. He pops off on TikTok Live. It's such a fun watch when you can yeah, catch it. Mm. Isn't that cool to make fun of somebody with like an open drug problem? Because like a drug problem is a problem you give yourself. No, yeah. I mean. There was a we show. Seen, we should have seen it from a young age how much he wanted candy. There was yeah. this show Come called on. House of Carters, which oh, yeah. was just a, a horror house of. Because like his older brother was in the Backstreet Boys, yep. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nick. Nick Carter. joined when he was like twelve. Yeah. Um, and so. The, the, they just exploit people. You know, that's all it ever is. Well, yeah, I mean, NSYNC that's got completely exploited, exploited. Justin Timberlake was like one of the Disney kids. Yeah, right? he right. was an So they would like make boy bands out of their favorites mm -hmm. of the Disney and, kids. And, uh, you know, Joey Fatone, yeah. uh, his son was like decapitated at a Disneyland park. Mm. So part of uh, the arraignment was that he could be in a boy band despite being 38 years old at the time. Really? Yeah. Did he get a chance to say bye, bye, bye to his son? No, that, that was part of the agreement, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> his son didn't exist, exist, exist. <laughs> <laughs> Joey Fatone his is head also... Bye, bye, bye. Yeah. yeah. Joey Fatone is the fat one. He is. Uh, you got that from that Adult Swim uh, robot chicken, right? I've, I've just seen it as a meme online. I don't know oh. where it originated. Well, there was just also fat one. one Fatone. Yeah. yeah, the fat one. Yeah. Well, that was like, it was, I don't, that actually seems like the one to be in because aside from. And saying. I mean, it was like, who, okay, so JT became big. pop superstar. Was anyone in the Backstreet Boys really big after? Nobody nobody was able to really break out from the no. Backstreet Boys. No, not really. I, I, Aaron Carter had like a. Uh, but Nick Aaron Carter Car had a. a, had a was the first to have like a solo career. Was Nick Carter the one who married Jessica Simpson? No, that was... Nick Lachey. Nick, Nick Lachey. Lachey. 98 Degrees. D this okay. I swear. Mm. Man, what a dumb bitch, but what a great Jessica fucking Jessica Simpson. Body. Yeah. Have you... Uh, do you... Well, you guys probably don't, but she's a great follow on Instagram. She, mm. at one point, was like a serious alcoholic Sick. and... Um, Sounds like my kind of bitch. Lost a bunch of weight. And Ooh, then this side's getting better and better. <laughs> but now she'll like have brand deals and partnerships and she'll be like, you should try Neustra system. Oh, and it's so like really like, concerning. Everyone's like, you go, Jess. She's got mm. wet brain. Yes, Dumb. probably. Well, she was already she like. She should date the guy from Smash Mouth. Yeah. He's got wet brain, too. Yeah. But I think he's, like, actively abusing alcohol. Yeah. Sick, Now dude. he's out in the street because we could all use a little change. Okay. Isn't it? Isn't <laughs> it? It's like, yeah, that's funny, man. It, but no one's ever had, like, what, what's the what's the downside of long-term pot use? You eventually become, like, Tommy Chong. I mean, you. Yeah, but yeah. that's like, look how <laughs> fucking cool I am. I got, well, a, there's like I got a podcast with my best friend and the woman uh, who I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. Certainly. Well, Bobby's not here this week. Bobby's <laughs> dead, dude. Good riddance, dude. He has COVID. I hope he He's does not... die. Yeah. I'd love to do this we every week. We want Bobby to be dead, dude. How mm. fucking cool is that? If Bobby were dead. Who if would Bobby, you replace Bobby If Bobby, Bobby were with? dead. Doodaloo, doodaloo, doodaloo. And then we have like a little fucking. It's a utopia. We have like hover yeah. cars. We're going to. Everyone's <laughs> fucking cool. <laughs> Kelly takes us on a trip to see what our lives would be like if Bobby's dead and why should we should kill him and replace him with her on the <laughs> podcast. No, you guys, def if, if something were to make Bobby completely indisposed and not able to, to fill in on third mic, you would choose, definitely wouldn't choose me. Who would we choose? Mm, I don't know. One of our subscribers. That would be awful. We probably just if one of our subscribers kills Bobby Sheehan, you can <laughs> replace him on take the podcast. I wouldn't put that. That's not a call to action. <laughs> <laughs> everything, everything is technically a dog whistle, though. Yes, everything, yeah. everything we do except this. Right. Um, what other boy bands are there? Ninety Eight Degrees. Now there's like BTS. Right, but BTS. they're like that. Yeah, because like uh, it's an import from Korea. Yeah. Oh girl. I love you so much. I want to ask husband for Teo Hayo. Oh, girl, I give your father a bag of rice for your hand. I take you to a farm and now I run along a fence with samurai sword. Kaya, I love you. Wow, that was cool, beautiful. Huh? Where was, is that it, That was, uh, that's what the, the, uh, Japanese people call a haiku. Mm. Yes. It means it's it's a Japanese for beautiful thing. Yeah. Kelly is, that our wedding is a song? haiku. <laughs> here's our here's our wedding song. Oh, I cannot wait to go back to hotel room and pay PlayStation 5. Oh yeah, it's a wedding. It's a tax writer cuz I live stream it for the Patreon. 
You got a PS5 this week. You better, be- you and better a believe Steam it. Deck. You better believe it. That's your fucking hey, chumps. Remember when we said we were going to fucking put that money in towards making a podcast? I funneled all of it. I embezzled all of it. I bought a video game system. This is the most you've talked to Kelly all week. <laughs> yeah, it's I told been her. Fucking great. I told her it's like, look, you want to talk? Get a fucking PS account. <laughs> yeah. Hop online. Mm. Fucking battle me. Yeah. So You're you so c- happy I don't do video games. You it's hate cool. that. We have our that video and Kelly, yeah, you like that he doesn't talk to you and plays video games. Oh, I love it. We have it's our amazing. own lives. That's what yeah. that's what keeps the relationship alive is complete mm. separation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kelly, when was the last time you were playing video? Were you ever video games as a kid even? No. Another thing we weren't allowed to have as a child is video game consoles. No My video games, no boy bands. Uh-huh, she, yeah. was like fucking, she was like a fucking a Amish Mormon. person. Um, an Amish. Like that, <laughs> it was yeah. just, you know, very conservative, we, very Catholic. Churned My our little own brother, butter. however... My little brother, who's six years younger than me, they were like, mm, he fucking, we're tired. So yeah. he got, but actually, no, my first video game console, now that I think about it, was GameCube. Okay. So GameCube yeah. was like the first thing, and I was really into Pikmin. Pikmin? Pikmin, the little, I think it was called Pikmin. So is that the sounds, one like, sounds like a game about the slave trade. <laughs> okay, cool. Get another <laughs> Pikmin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but that's a breed of black person. Right. <laughs> And then the other game that I had and was obsessed with was the Simpsons Road Rage. That was like a GTA for the Simpsons. Yeah, really? it was. Yeah. Oh, it was so fun. Yeah, it was I know. Great. You could like run around Springfield. They need okay. to remaster that. Yeah, mm. it was a good game. That was a I, sick one. I had N64 when and I was a, a classic. Kid. I found out that was yeah. like one of the lowest selling uh, Nintendo consoles. Really? Isn't that wild? Like I associate that with being like I the best one. I think that's the most popular. Yeah. Because of Goldeneye. Like that was okay, when they had I like remember I never had Goldeneye. I was big on Super Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, Super Mario, Kirby's Dream Land. Um, uh, what else? Was, I think those are the main ones. Those I are played. like Super Mario. Uh, those are Nint- Super Nintendo. Oh, and I, had, I always had sports games. That was big. NBA yeah. Courtside '99. See, I loved playing those games, but I was always like, man, I, I would never have like a friend to come over. And so mm. now it's cool. Yeah. That like you can just play online. Yeah. All the time, yeah. anytime. I remember everyone. NHL '99 was the hockey video game, and the announcers. Um, they didn't. Now they have the announcers in the sports games announce the whole game, but then they just like yelled and screamed when big plays yeah. happen. Wild shot! Yeah, that was yeah. NHL '99. I know like all those calls. My brother never even played, but he just was in the room and he was like Glover save, <laughs> <laughs> and you just hit someone. You go whoa, northbound on a southbound freeway. Woo woo! <laughs> That's gotta be such good money for those announcers. Just oh to, yeah. Like, call basically every possible fucking play it's got to be so annoying like because when you're the announcer do the games now Mm -hmm. they have to say every single player's name in the entire league because you have to have it because now the announcers call the whole game so they have to be able to say the name of every single player in the league the name of every single possible hit every single count two balls one strike three balls two strikes like but they can they get to do that uh, the, the so now they just have like two announcers who are guys who call MLB games in real life and they just pay them to do the y- video. You know game. what? I bet they only record a few things and then just run it through AI software. I was going to say. Oh, maybe. Or, yeah, yeah. Or could they pull from like yeah. real games? Like last I'm sure games? that's what they do. At this point, it's like there's no way. They probably hire them like, hey, can we hire? They, they're paying for to use the likeness of their voice. Yeah. Most yeah. Likely. And they probably have them come in for like a day of recording. It's like, ah, just run a couple of scenarios, read a couple of these yeah. names. Yeah pronounce a couple of these things and then they run it through an mm. AI software and then they could probably get like another voice actor to kind of fill in a little uh, maybe blah, 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 and then just yeah seamless I that I, was my I can guarantee you that my weird do. thing as a kid I would turn the volume off on the games yeah. and act like I was the announcer and I would mm. announce the game and I'm like well, one day I'm loser. gonna be, one day I'm <laughs> gonna be like Michael K and John Sterling That's awesome. <laughs> call Yankee games coming to the plate another delicious little fucking muscular <laughs> man <laughs> Um, uh, J- Johnson run into uh, yeah. first base with a massive cock, probably yeah. <laughs> flapping between that cup that can barely conceal the protrudement between his thighs. <laughs> Matt, what the hell are you doing in there? Get out of that damn room, boy! Dad, I'm playing Ken Griffey Jr.'s baseball. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's how I enjoy I the game. I don't want you playing them games with the Negroid on the cover, boy. You get your ass down here and get your beaten while you read Bible verses. Why does he got to wear his hat backwards? Why can't he wear his hat forwards like a good old-fashioned ball player? You're going to wear them sleeves in this house, boy. Someday I'll run away and never wear sleeves 
waves again, Dad. <laughs> and I'll practice all of my homoerotic fantasies on a podcast that people will pay upwards of five dollars a month to hear. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Matt what Maron Matt Maron story. Matt Maron begins. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, those. Um, th- what's funny with some of the games later on, because there were always issues with paying for likeness. Like Barry Bonds never gave the rights for his likeness to the video game. Yeah. He was just like, "No, pay me more." And yeah, they so wouldn't. they just use like the Donkey Kong skin yeah, for him. <laughs> oh, stop! No, Babe, it I, I, I look it up. It's there. <laughs> it's no, not it, me. In MVP baseball, I remember the name was John Dowd, and it was just mm. a white guy, but he was the six foot four right fielder for the San Francisco Giants, so you all knew it was Barry Bonds. Ooh. But he was just the one guy that wasn't in the game. For the college football games, they just never they they can't pay the players. So they're not allowed to sell their likeness. So they would never have their names in it. It would just be like QB number ten. For the Texas wow. Longhorns, but Can they do it now. Yeah, I, I think say. that I think uh, so. They they stopped doing the game for a while. I don't know if they brought it back. There was talk now that they signed a deal for name, image, likeness. Mm-hmm. They may bring the game back, but you'd have like Pittsburgh number eleven with dreadlocks on the cover of the game. But it's not necessarily Larry Fitzgerald, but it wow. obviously is Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, so they were clearly making money off their likeness. Good. Right, right. Money, money, money. Mm. <laughs> so you can't pay college baseball players. No, you no can't. college athletes at all. I think not even football. Now they're allowed to make money off their name, image, likeness. I think there's still rules on it. But for a long time, you would not be able to sell your autograph. Mamma mia! If you were a that college doesn't feel athlete, fair. could that you have? Well, could fair. you still have an OnlyFans as a college athlete? <laughs> I mean, that's it, what I would do, man. If I was a well, the whole college thing, athlete, the whole thing was you're getting a free education. That's what you're getting paid. And back in the what a rip off. Yeah, back in like the days of like early, early, um, like 1900s, the uh, Olympics was all amateur athletes. That's how. So it if you, yeah, I feel like I knew so, that. Yeah, like there was a whole thing with Jim Thorpe, who mm. had it was found out that he played a game of some sport where he was paid. And then he participated in the Olympics, and they like took away a lot of his Good. Uh, reward uh, Look, dude. awards. I think they Maybe. just recently well, like regave them to him yeah. posthumously. Why? Because he fucking chopped off his dick and <laughs> said he was a woman, and they were like, "Oh, what a fucking hero this freak is!" Right? Yeah, it's it's wild. You're on how- notice, <laughs> fucking whoever the fuck Matt's talking about, Jim Thorpe. Okay, cool. Mm. Yeah, Jim J- J- uh, Jane Thorpe. Jane Thorpe. No. Don't dead name. Don't right. dead name. I'm sorry. How Isn't, fucking yeah, cool is that? Dead. If you don't call me by my PlayStation gamer tag, you're <laughs> dead naming me. My PlayStation gamer tag, Joe W. Gorman. Mm. Yikes. There goes my opportunity to call people gay on yeah. fucking PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> Is that I'm, I'm playing with like Shadow Knight 84, mm. fucking Butcher 76, and Joe Gorman in the yeah. arena. <laughs> I was just thinking about this earlier this week because it was a uh, major. The baseball had their All Star Week this week, and I passed by. Hey, um, now you're an All Star. There was some park I was. I don't know if it's like Shakespeare in the park, but there's just people who do like open theater plays in the park. Oh yeah, and there was a whole. I, I think you yeah. were witnessing a gang rape match. Maybe <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's. I don't think that was a play. Right. But I just, I saw that, and there's so many people gathered around it. I remember when I was a kid, I saw Phantom of the Opera. I fell asleep halfway through. But I've never called theater boring. So right. it annoys me when all those kids are like, baseball's just boring. Yeah. I'm just like, you just call, can anyone just call anything boring? That, like, if you're somebody, oh, I watched baseball when I was a kid. It's not as exciting now. That's fine. But a lot of people are like, oh, I can never watch baseball because it's boring. I'm like, I can't watch your Lord of the Rings. That's boring to I, me. I like baseball more now as an adult just because yeah. I'm patient and I kind of understand it a little bit more. Yeah. No, it's because you're a pothead and things run slow. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah, enjoyable. Yeah. That helps but too. Whenever. Also, yeah, I'm, I'm never at Yankee Stadium without a vape pen now. Mm. Well, it's also, if you're, it's like anything. If you know what's going on, every single pitch is like, okay, the pitcher just threw his fastball. Now it's an 0-1 count. Is he going to throw this mm-hmm. pitch on this time? There's one out. There's a runner on first base. He may throw a pickoff to it. Like, there's a million different scenarios at all times. But if you're just watching, you don't know that, then it's, yeah, you wouldn't care about but it. But also, like, there, I don't know. I watched baseball growing up because my dad and my brother watched it. So it's he like. Wor- so it was no pop music. No, um, what was the other one? Uh, <laughs> no game pop, consoles. No yes. game consoles, but baseball. Yeah. Baseball. Good Honestly, old America, had, America's past And we had no TV Tuesdays. So Isn't on TV, I mean, on, on Tuesdays, we'd have to come home from 
fucking Catholic school and like read books and just yeah. not watch television. You know what's you know what's crazy is like when I met Kelly's dad, he said he would give me a, a five hundred ba- brass farthings to leave his daughter be. No, to leave that's her not untouched. True. And I said, sir. She's worth more than that. Yeah. <laughs> My and I said, give me a PlayStation 5. <laughs> and he said, no. And I said, well, now I'm going to fucking keep your daughter and buy a PlayStation mm. 5. Yeah. Keep your daughter. Yeah. What um, were you saying about watching baseball? When uh, you grew up with your well, I was just yeah. saying, like, you know, you're explaining pitches and stuff like that. But even now as an adult, I can go to a game and enjoy myself yeah. and not have to know what's happening yeah you know we, we make money i can get like i hear a loud sound yeah. and then the everybody cheers hit. and yeah. you you cheer let yeah. me en- let me enjoy my 25 dollar plate of nachos yeah thank yeah. you please <laughs> um there's something else i was gonna say about oh my dad when he first met my dad um joe was talking about being engaged and getting married and for some reason everybody takes that to heart even though just He's because one person says it i don't yeah. get it and my That's dad right, folks it never ends wait so you're not his wife no no, no <laughs> not no. legally not in, the, no. not in the state of new york but in the state of mind mm, common no. law mm. um we I'm are common law married now we're not common law married okay we are technically like common years. law what <laughs> yeah. Really? I think you've been reading the wrong uh, book. It feels like know. fucking a million. It feels <laughs> like a fucking lifetime, my friend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fellas, you know what I'm saying? You know, hey, this is hey, this is my couch. It's gonna be my bed tonight. Yikes, <laughs> fellas, you know what I'm talking about? Um So he was just saying the things about us being you two being married in front of your dad? Yeah, and my dad was like Don't don't do a big wedding. I'll I'll give you five thousand dollars to just elope, but if you don't do that, you're not getting anything. <laughs> I'm like, okay, thank you for that. That's great. Did your parent? Did they have a big wedding, or did they? They do had like a VFW wedding. Yeah. You know, everybody was poor, so right. You know, you just had a sheet cake and got married at the at the church, mm. and then went over to the VFW. Yeah. Um, well, I, f- I went to a friend's wedding a few months ago, and it was in like a uh, prehistoric animal museum. <laughs> I mean, it probably was beautiful. It's just it was so a, much money. Yeah, it was in Texas, and it was uh, so. There's like, there's the kind of not even ballroom, just like an open space Ooh. where we had the wedding. The actual ceremony was outdoors. Mm-hmm. We came inside, and you can eat, and then you can go walk around the exhibits That's and really see cool, these actually. like, like armadillo. Uh, what like recreate? They're not actual armadillos, but they're just like, uh, yeah, uh, molded armadillo, I guess. Um, but yeah, that was nice, pretty. What man. about you, Joe? What are you going to do for the wedding? We're going to get married in the metaverse. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get that's do the it future, online. man. Yeah, mm. that's the future. Are you, you guys worried about the metaverse? No, I don't really. Is that like what the internet, Mark Zuckerberg, and all? No, I think it's like VR headsets. Yeah. It's what Mark Zuckerberg's eventually going to turn Facebook into, because okay. he thinks eventually, like. The internet will all kind of be in a more VR kind of environment. So you'll be able to almost just go and hang out with people in the yeah. metaverse. I worry about it because housing, we're already in a housing crisis and apartments just get smaller and more expensive. And I just think with the metaverse, we're just going to get used to and, and okay with a 55 square foot apartment well, I with think a VR headset. Well, what if like yeah. in the and metaverse, you can have like a mansion that's just way cheaper? Yeah, because I think if anything, it will like incentivize people like, oh, well, I don't need to live in Manhattan now. Anyone mm. I can see in Manhattan, I can see in the metaverse in my much nicer place. Mm. So I can just live for cheap in the real world. And then Honestly, like a god in the metaverse. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I actually wouldn't mind that if I can if I can just get the enjoyment without having to spend all that money. Deus ex machina, god of yeah. the machine. If I could like get on stage in front of an audience, a New York crowd in you the can metaverse, do that. and you then just live somewhere that, else. You know what? There's like a. I keep doing like I keep. I have like a a a, a Oculus Rift, so I uh, I'm I'm on like all these Facebook groups where they have like these online metaverse. Yeah. Comedy yeah. shows. I just never sign up. Or I always. But miss don't them. those not last very long? Because it's essentially open mic comedy in the metaverse, right? And so I think there are showcases. Though. Okay, then there's showcases. Yeah. But there are people that watch these, you know, metaverse comedy, whatever, and um, then they complain, and then Oculus or what, whoever, you know, Facebook, the metaverse, like shuts them down wait they come because like they complain the comedians yes because there's like a joke that they don't like so it's like in a new york club or any club for that matter like a person a physical person has to go in person complain to a physical manager fill out a comment fill out a comment card like there's all these like you know uh, barriers or they can or they're just like ignored and yeah they're ignored but in the metaverse insulted me and they're like fuck you do you have any idea who that is that's 
notorious comedian slash sexual assaulter Louis C.K. and he brings in one billion dollars to this comedy club. So we just need like a Joe Rogan of the metaverse to Damn, open up cool his own club, yeah. create the podcast. Well, that's the thing is like if you have the software, like can't you just like have like a private fucking thing that's like invite only, and it's like you can't you know what happens here stays here, yeah. you know. I guess you. Uh, there, I'm yeah, sure there's, there's eventually like right now it's like it's Facebook and Facebook is a very family friendly thing. But there's going to be like everyone wants to use the fucking VR thing for sex. So, of course, there's going to be like adult oriented mm. things. So even if it's on like a fucking Pornhub server, right. I'm sure there's going to be like a comedy club where it's like, look, this is just because this is the only place where we can do it. Uh, but what would you do, Matt? <laughs> it's fine. What it's did you do, Matt? A, it's just a glass. It's fine. Matt. Come on, dude. I'm sorry. See what happens when Bobby's not here. He just goes. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's lashing out because Bobby's not here. <laughs> Dogs are fucking fighting. I never knew Bobby had such a calming yeah. presence, <laughs> dude. Would there start? Ah, oh, this is my yeah. nightmare where I was like, I hope, I wish Bobby wasn't alive, and now <laughs> Bobby's dead. <laughs> and it's like, Bobby, come back, come back. How do you think Bobby would have reacted to the dog fighting? Because I don't think he likes that kind of. He would have gotten up and walked away. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. And then he would have like made like a little, oh, uh, I guess uh, I guess they're a critic of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think Finney's actually bleeding. I, I know, I know. I'm like I, the whole time I'm sitting here concerned about him. We I don't, don't know care. where he we is. We got a new dog, folks. This no. is <laughs> this is number one prize fighter Petra, mm. and she's a <laughs> killer. <laughs> We're just watching. Well, I'm just watching Petra for a few days. Should we adopt this dog? I wish. Let us know in the comments. Should hey, folks, in all seriousness. We're on the fence about getting a second dog. Should we get a second dog? Not necessarily Petra, but a small dog, preferably one to keep Finny company. Of course, they would show up on the podcast. Mm, probably. I we, we should do, we should try to do a live show sometime. Yeah, like a live on Facebook. About that. Or oh, like, live on live in the metaverse. Yeah, like I mean, like we could like stream it live so that way yeah. people can comment and we can interact with it. While oh it yeah, yeah, yeah. I can stream. I can figure that out in two minutes, but yeah. Um, so in the metaverse, can you physically feel things? Yes. The thing is, Have if, they you, gotten if you die in the metaverse, you die in real life. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like, if as I far as like having <laughs> sex in the metaverse, yeah. would you be able to feel? No. Sex? You, you have sex in the metaverse with a man. You're gay in real life. No, mm. I think, I think like an immersive VR sexual experience, I think is just wearing the vr headset and like stroking <gasps> your dick while like you know but like the imagery yeah. is of a woman okay. oh this looks like a fucking old black woman oh <laughs> like how uh, eventually you're gonna have like a fucking bodysuit that you wear that has like yeah haptic that like you feel like they already have a like, vr you know uh vibrator yeah mm, a VR i would, I, would I mean like that would mm -hmm. be cool like you're playing a video game and you're on a beach and it gets a little warm like you're on the you know yeah and that it can would get awesome. it can feel like you know Eventually, they're going to have one that hooks up to your brain, you know, so you can actually, like, feel, like, wetness. That would be... That's, like, too scary, though. At what point do you think civilization ends? When we stop caring we're about each close. other. Mm. Yeah, we're getting close. Because that's the wild thing, and, like, there are times in history where thousands of years went by, and all those people's lives for those thousands of years were not that much different as far as technological advancements. Like, like for the, the time. Yeah, like the entirety of ancient Egypt, their mm -hmm. lives didn't change as much as the difference between my life and my great grandfather's life. Right. It's like we were born into this life. For for right. a lifetime used to be like the all of existence. Yeah. Like, or just, we've always done it like this. Or just yeah, like the idea that my great grandfather didn't have a TV, I do. Right. I have the internet. They didn't have the internet. That's such a drastic change. Right. Where like what was the change from oh in like a thou between three thousand BC and two thousand BC was um we're better at building buildings by a little bit. Mm -hmm. We have Jewish slaves to help us now. And they're always complaining about the weather. <laughs> Which is weird because they control it. I don't know why they're always schwitzing. What's going to... Yeah. So when do you think society is going to end? I don't know. I want, like... With all the um, VR stuff, you feel like, like... There's no way a crazy person who wants to kill everyone doesn't get involved in, like, stuff like this. Why? If anything, it, like, bars them out. You think so? Yeah. No one has a fucking Gmail account and fucking <laughs> serial rapist tendencies. Or I guess... It's yeah, one or the like other. Like, everyone's like, I live off the grid so I can kill people in real life. Yeah. It's like, I'm very much on the grid. Mm. 
so I can enjoy hentai on the internet. Or it's just like, you know, because we haven't had like a crazy enough person who's got like nukes that'll kill everyone in the world yet. Nobody's but, like that. But when you have like hunt. school shooters, it's like, all right, well, what if uh, technology gets to the point where somebody can take out a whole country well, or city i feel like, like a terrorist i feel like yeah. those, like an those, online terrorist i feel yeah. like those movies were like i'm gonna hack the fucking white house and, isn't that and what we're afraid to of with russia though i don't think because I, I think like if you're smart enough to fucking launch missiles you're also smart enough to like find ways to drain bank accounts to give you financial Ooh, stability for so true. long that yeah. there's no profit in in ending all of civilization right it's like why if you if you're smart enough to override the government safe locks to launch nuclear missiles you're smart enough to defund certain aspects of there's, there's easier mm. ways to cripple the government you want to cripple right financially than just like launching so there's them. always going to be a gap yeah. because the person who's smart who the person who's actually smart enough mm -hmm. to really end everything knows other better things to do Absolutely. but the people who are dumb enough that they just want to kill people they're not mm. smart enough to actually do it and they're not they yeah it's like the people i'm going to launch every missile and start us anew like they don't have like the the, the means to navigate through the security physically right. You know, and, and the people that mentally are like, oh, well, what you can do is do this. It's like, what, there's no profit in that. Yeah. There's no profit in it, folks. Mm. There's, uh, there's no profit in the cure. Mm. You just got to treat the symptoms for right. money. So, Kelly, tell us how Joe is as a boyfriend. Tell us how romantic he is and how... Because <laughs> he was on... The, Joe was on The Thing Is, Shannon's podcast, and I listened to it, and at one point, um, she talks about him being in a relationship, and he just, like, says, like, a couple of sentences genuinely about how good you are and how yeah. good you are together, and she's like... Shannon was just like... Did not... She's like, I never heard Joe say anything serious before. <laughs> I know. it's The funny thing about dating Joe is um, that... People, especially other women, ask me, like, doesn't it, like, isn't he always on? And I'm like, he's a person. I mean, yeah. you know? Yeah. You know? So, no. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. I mean, I think that there are people that know Joe, like Bobby said on the pod a few days or a few weeks ago, like, how incredibly nice to wait staff Joe yeah. is. Like, and that's just like a one instance of, of, you know, somebody that's just super nice and empathetic and like, um, you know, I think people maybe take somebody that should not be taken seriously at all, like too seriously, Yeah, you know? So like, it's usually your fault when he hits you. Oh yeah. 100% okay. of the time, dude. Gotcha. This fucking goofball keeps walking into the doors yeah. the way she does. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then she towers over me. But yeah, I'm that's like, true. Ah, I get, hey bitch, where's my fucking pop tart? That's, is Joe the first guy you've dated that's shorter than you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is that, was that a big thing? That seems to be a big thing for a lot of girls. Y well, yeah, I think it was totally one of those things where I was like, I'm five, eight. Like I cannot date anybody. Shorter than me. Like, I want to wear heels. Yeah. I want to wear and heels. And I think also, but that for me was such like a, like a, not a personal, but I wanted to feel smaller. Right. Like I always was so self-conscious of like everything. And so I make sure she feels small every single day. Yeah. He does such a good job about that. <laughs> and so like for me, I was just like, I'll date these really tall guys that like can't read kind of thing. Cause they make can't me feel read. small and smart, you know? And then, um, Dating I, a lot of athletes? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, um, just a lot of dum-dums. Um, That's the worst when you're dating a guy who's like tall, dumb, but not good at a sport. Yeah, everyone. Um, <laughs> I could have gone pro, yeah. but I, I, I fucking shattered my knee in, in third grade. If you're going to be tall and dumb, you got to have some athlete money. Or yeah, else, I mean, yeah. I've dated like rugby player. Like, okay. Uh, ru okay, rugby players. A what? rugby player. What? Um, What's but, like, his I've name? Also Vinny really, Jones? I've also like been into like that like artist type as well. Oh, that's okay. just like, that's you mean. know, like depressive and, mean. and you know. Um, but Did when you it get came tall, to dumb artists... Yeah, totally. Oh, okay. wait, I'm sorry. Tall, dumb artist. It's not really so much dumb as it is. Um, fuck boy. N yeah, like real fuck boy energy okay. of like not the uh, the words not coming. It's uh, conceited. Okay. Mm. Not dumb, but conceited. Yeah. Um, and when it came to dating Joe, I had been single for such a long time, and I really like wasn't dating at all, like not even casually, and. It just was one of those things where it's like in insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and hoping for a different result. Right. So I thought of my list of qualities on a guy, you know, 
him being short is the one thing that's stopping me from like mm. entertaining him. And my one girlfriend was like, is him being short the only thing that's stopping you? And I'm like, yeah, literally, like that's the only thing. And she's like, fucking go on a date and see. Yes. And then, you know, thank the God. Rest is thank God for that friend. Judy. Mm. It was Judy, really? Mm -hmm. Judy, I owe you a huge apology. <laughs> 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 I, I thought it was May. May also was like such an advocate for you. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Such Ooh. an advocate. I will right, we'll do off air maybe what? The, the the friends who were uh, against Joe. Oh no, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't think I actually have anybody that was against Joe at mm. all. I also was like, I also like told maybe Judy and May. Yeah. Like that was like maybe like the extent of people okay. that I told. It wasn't until we were like dating and it was pretty much a guarantee that you know you and I were going to be like boyfriend girlfriend official, which didn't take either one of us a long time to get to. I think mm. we both were just like super ready to you know. How long did down. it take you guys to get to husband wife? Literally, <laughs> I moved in a month after we dated. No, it wasn't a month. One month after it we wasn't dated, a month. I said, "Baby, I'm moving in." No, <laughs> um, I mean, because I've lived, I lived in this palace by myself, and you were homeless. I was. So I was mm. like, "Come, uh, you know, I'm, yeah, I'll uh, take." Don't, in the don't. Everyone, everyone keeps building up a Brooklyn lifestyle. Like, oh, I can't wait to fucking live in a in a fucking like uh, uh, apartment with a bunch of artists in Brooklyn. I was literally living in in an apartment in Brooklyn with a bunch of like artists and drug dealers and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the fucking basement flooded and the mm. pipes burst. Everything was like falling the fuck apart. You now. had a waterfall in your yeah. in your there was a, room. There I know was because a I'm uh, I'm uh, just ha uh, coincidentally I'm friends with the person who you bought the room from. Yeah, who oh, lived you are? in the yeah. She's a barista at the Starbucks I used to go to. That's so weird. And um, we just became friendly because I was in there every day. And then um, she saw a picture of me on my Instagram story with Joe and was like, wait, I think I know that guy. And she tells me all these horrible things about the place. Uh, She's like, oh, I had to tell him I was moving back to California just so he would actually think I wasn't leaving because it's terrible. <laughs> Did she yeah. live there with those guys? Yeah, yeah she hated them. Oh. She hated the. Ho she hated like everyone, everything about it. She's like, everyone there is such like they're like I don't know what did she say, uh, like frat broy or yeah, just but like it fucking was it perfect for me, dude. Yeah, yeah. I was it gonna was say fucking perfect. I was like, damn, this is like place. a bunch of dudes who are yeah. selling drugs and hate women. And Joe's like, sign me, dude. Up. <laughs> I was like, this place fucking rules. It's like I was buying. I would buy like an ounce of weed for my roommate, yeah. you know, and I would just like smoke it in a day, smoke it in a day. We had like a washer and dryer on site. I was yeah. like, this place fucking rolls seven eighty a month. Mm. Fuck it. I don't care. Nice. Everyone was chill. Like I could just like I had blackout curtains. Mm. I was just in there smoking pot, hanging yeah. out. Everyone was chill. Mm. You know, it was fine. I never had any issues. I was, there was never any drama with video any of games. Them. We just we just all hung out and just did our own shit. Mm. But I would definitely see it would suck if you were a woman. Yeah, no, because yeah. I of course went to your apartment after the fact, mm -hmm. after the flood had happened and everything. It never looked. No cleaner. way I was going over there, and I was it was disgusting. It was like so gross. And I am not the most cleanly person. Bobby reminds me of that every time he comes <laughs> over. <laughs> I am not the most cleanly of person, but like I still like things to be nice. And Joe just like doesn't clean up after himself, and I'm mm. not going to let, nag i let my excrement fall where it may it, essentially and like i cannot i cannot be like yeah you're gonna do the dishes ah. like i can't get mad and i can't freak out because yeah. i am not like a clean person that makes sure the and she'll bed know, is done. she knows i'll leave right <laughs> you know to it's me like, hey. the what instead of me like cleaning all the time and resenting him in my mind it's like just find a fucking housekeeper just get mm. a cleaner to come and do the bathroom like i spent this morning like sleep well, i shouldn't say slaving away shit <laughs> african-american <laughs> yeah. i spent my morning just like sweating and like looking a wreck and like looking just when i get into cleaning mode like i get really nasty and i just like he'll try mm. to talk to me about his fucking playstation and i'm just yeah. like can't you see i'm busy and um you know, trying to talk to me about his PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, you gotta check this out, man. I was showing her, I was showing her my fucking new controllers and shit. And I'm I like, was that's like, very good, dear. Okay. I unlocked all this shit in Spider Man. I'm like, look at this fucking mm. shit. This is fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's great, and I'm happy for you. I think it's awesome that you have this like cool thing that you're excited about. But I'm I've trying to get the black mold off of the kitchen. I mean, the 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 bathroom wall. Oh, baby, I told you we're getting a new ass apartment. I Fuck know. that black mold. We're I gonna know. Yeah. we're gonna get that nice white mold that yeah. fucking helps you and makes right. you strong. <laughs>
But it's yeah. like, damn, what's that? How's he fucking running a sub four minute mile? It's like, oh, yeah. it's a white mold in his lungs. Joe's just into history and he wants to make the Irish slaves again. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, all right, so after GameCube, uh, were there any other video games? Um, so, GameCube was the console that my older brother and I got, and then all other video game consoles were gifted to Billy, who mm. is six years younger than me, and he, like, I mean, I think even he has a PS5. Like, yeah. his favorite game is MLB The Show. Oh, um, I was playing that. I got, because the new one came out the week of the lockdown for yeah, the I pandemic, so yeah. I bought it. Yeah, that was my whole pandemic lockdown. Yeah, so Billy was, like, a video game kid. So yeah. he had all of the all of the new consoles that yeah. would come mm. out. Like, he'd save up his money to get them. I remember one time I was um, uh, going off to college, and, like, all I could I I hated summers back at home. Like I just wanted to get back to college. And Where did you go to college? Montclair State. Okay. North How Jersey. far away is that? You're Forty-five s- minutes. And you live in South Jersey. Or I live in Central Jersey. Well, my Cent- pa- I'm from don't, Central don't Jersey. Don't tell us where mom and dad live. That's um, fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from my family. <laughs> <laughs> my dad retired and will probably kill you if you try to come to the house. Yeah, get off of our property, dude. Um, so since Jersey and then, oh, so summer's back at home with your family. You just wanted to go back. I just to wanted school. to go back to school. So yeah. I was so excited to go back for the next semester. And um, my dad was moving me in and Billy, you know, was with us. And uh, of course, we had to stop at the video game store that was like near because there's something about my family. We're really into like collecting things yeah. like um, yeah. and got so a ton of shit, ton of shit. And uh, Billy, till this day, even though you can buy stuff digitally, always like to have like the hard copy. And I don't think even at the time you could do digital. It was all mm-hmm. hard copy stuff. So we go to this old ass video game store and I um my friends make fun of me for this to this day. Like I show up to campus and I like, I'm like, oh, sorry, I'm late guys. We had to stop at the video game store because of Billy. <laughs> and I was like such a brat about it. Yeah. Um, I but remember yeah. there's like uh, my roommate, uh, my former roommate, Mark Henley. May he, May he rest, rest in, in peace. peace. He um, took me to, there's a video game store in uh, Jersey City near where we live that has a bunch of like old video games. And for me, the cool thing was to go see all the spoiled sports games because there is a cover athlete every year. And it's like some of them, it's like Tom Brady's on the cover. And it's like, okay, he's one of the best ever. Some of them, it's just a guy who was good that year and they thought was going to be good. And so it's just Peyton Hillis on the cover of Madden, who (laughs) no one's ever heard of unless you were watching the NFL in 2012. Um, So seeing some of those old ones is fun. Also, so mainly I played a lot of sports games. And then since the last like 15 years, if I ever get a video game, it's a sports game. But the last year I was playing like other games, I saw they had an old Jack and Daxter game. Ooh, that's a fun ass. Love that one. Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. What's Those that? Are, um, they were just like they were similar games. They were like I guess RPGs. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of. You, yeah. Action yeah. RPG. What's yeah. RPG? Role playing game. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll Role show you game. later. Mm. I mean, I, I you just is like Spider Man. No, Spider Man is an action adventure game. <laughs> Jesus RPG, Christ. I guess it's kind of like Super it's, uh, Mario, but uh, Fallout with, game, that okay. game where the bombs yeah. were going off. I guess it's like Super Mario, but with animals. There's a Super Mario RPG. Yeah, yeah. What's the difference between like Super Mario sixty four and an RPG? Super Mario, uh, Super Mario sixty four, like those are action adventure games where it's mainly like getting from one place to another. Right. An RPG is, uh, it, it's you're going, but it's more story based. You're accomplishing missions. And like, well, uh, in and Mario, you, yeah. you had to accomplish missions to collect the stars. Sort of, but it's like doing <laughs> specific things, yeah. actions. And then RPGs is you can, uh, you know, there's dialogue options. There's, you know, branching storylines. Mm-hmm. You have a little more control. It feels more like it, it's your influence has action over. Is the that story. the same idea of like third person shooter? No, third, <laughs> no, third person shooter. Damn, like third Joe person Field, shooter. Yeah, this is <laughs> sh- third person shooter. Me and Kelly know absolutely nothing about video games, and Joe <laughs> is just like, oh, I got to explain this. Yeah, <laughs> well, third person shooter can also be like an action adventure. It's just yeah. like a type where action adventure could also be like running and climbing. Shooter is mainly like using guns as mm-hmm. the first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Got it. Got it. Means got it. of defense. Right. <laughs> 
That's why. That's like. Uh, this is like if I took the two of you to a hockey yeah. game and you got. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, all right. So offsides right. is when they go past the line. Of here. course, the <laughs> only yeah, the yeah. only exception to all of this is is Red Dead Redemption Two, the greatest video game of all time. My brother has that game yeah. on. Uh, uh, he just got a PS5, but I don't know if he plays Red Dead on that. I got. I play it online. So yeah. if he does, let me know. Okay, we'll, I'll we'll, we'll posse up. Yeah, because that's a that's an RPG because you have stories. It's a shooter because you can just play it straightforward shooting as a quest. Wasn't it's, there a thing with Red Dead where um at the, there was some like woman's rights feminist yeah. at the time and everyone would just put videos of them killing her online. You could feed her Wait, alligators. What? Yeah, you could feed her to alligators. There's like a woman that that's like uh, women's suffrage is a right. Oh, oh like a right. character in the game. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's and so like so guys funny. can like you can you know and there's a a quest or you can actually choose to march with her mm. and then some guys tried like hey bitch why don't you fucking stop and he's like all right partner why don't you just walk away let these women here congregate or you can you know kill her and, yeah and, and you know that's a aspect of the rpg i start the game as as full evil and i'm robbing i robbed a train mm. oh i fucking love that shit i'll be like i'll be taking that yeah thank you kindly <laughs> you know and then i whistle for my horse i jump off the train onto my horse love it Mm. And then, uh, and then oh, near the end Jesse of the game, Jesse James in, yeah, yeah, and then, but then, like, you can become like a, a deputy at one right. point, and I'm, I'm bringing in all these varmints. Yeah, it's great. I love that game. You went man. from being a train robber to a deputy. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, it's a beautiful story. I know there was. Um, I was reading about Alan Pinkerton. Uh, have you ever heard of the Pinkerton yeah, Detective yeah. Agency? So the term "private eye" comes from there because their logo was like an mm. eye saying "We're always watching." So the term they were the d- first detective agency. My they grandpa basically was did, a private investigator. It's so funny because yeah. like, I thought it was like invented by uh, Sherlock Holmes because they talked about <laughs> the Pinkerton Detective Agency. I was like, okay, yeah. so that's like a made-up fucking thing. No, and no. then I was like, oh, that's a real. Were thing. Were they like the first one? What was yeah. their deal? Or they were the um, so. This guy, Alan Pinkerton, uh, he uh, was from somewhere in Europe. I forgot where. He comes over and he's like, uh, he would like build barrels. That was his trade. Yeah. And he would go to the, the, he lived in like the woods in Illinois, like uh, suburbs of Chicago before they were like suburbs, but just outside of Chicago. He would always go to some area of like forest where he could get his wood from and saw people stealing stuff. And so he goes to the, police agency and they kind of go undercover and they catch him and then he becomes a deputy and just works his way up and ends up becoming a guy who gets all these people to go undercover the big thing was they discovered the pl- there was a plot to try and kill abe lincoln in baltimore on his Whoa. way to becoming president and so they were like there was no cia at this point so they were just like the organization that did stuff. They started operating out of Chicago. The big, uh, they ended up getting a lot of negative publicity because when Jesse James was robbing all those trains, the Pinkertons were like, we're going to fucking get Jesse James. And they blew up his childhood home, but he wasn't there. So they just killed his little brother. <laughs> Sick, dude. <laughs> That's terrible. And then everyone's just like, the fucking Pinkertons are supposed to be helping us. And they're just, you know, this is the early A cab. Oh, early, yeah. Before people realized how corrupt and evil police officers yeah. were. Um, I and think the word's inept, but anyways. Mm. <laughs> corrupt, corrupt and evil murderers, yes. police officers. Uh, we are an anti- Blue Lives Matter podcast. We're a Blue Lives Don't Matter all podcast. All of these views are Joe's and Joe's. BLDM. BLDM. Blue Lives Don't Matter. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I like that better. Instead of Black Lives Matter, we're just Blue Lives Don't Matter. Yeah. <laughs> That's my much town, easier. My hometown has a um, a thin blue line in between the mm. yellow. You should get a B, wear a BLDM shirt. They'll have no idea what it means, we but you'll right. know. Yeah, well, women, still, yeah. Be, women that like uh, thin blue lines have multiple thin blue lines running up and down their legs. Huh? Mm. Varicose veins. Yeah, I have those. Dumb. Okay, shut up. Don't say that. <laughs> You're fucking ruining our integrity yeah. on the internet, babe. Don't don't fucking be vulnerable. Rule one of podcasting: never be fucking vulnerable. <laughs> you uh, don't listen to the podcast I listen yeah. to. <laughs> no, I, I fucking certainly do not. Unless it, <laughs> unless it involves Joe Rogan eating elk meat. No, I don't <laughs> listen to your podcast. Oh, I may get elk meat soon because I just really Ooh. there's a restaurant oh. dark side of the moo. In Jersey, and it's got all exotic Where's that meats. At? It's got like in Jersey City. Uh. It's got like bull. Uh, no, it ha- I, had bi- I had a bison burger. Oh, good. All- yeah, and they also have elk and yak, and yeah, Yakety there's a whole yak. bunch of them. Damn. We've been watching this show alone on Netflix. Yeah. Kelly loves it. So good. Yeah. And they just like shoot deer yeah. and process it's like they, they it. They take like 12 it. people and they put them on like a. 10. 10 people and they put them either on like a deserted island or just like this big 
empty pack in the of wilderness. wilderness. Yeah. yeah. And like they just, it's survived. They have like GoPros. Is it like and Survivor? Or? It's survivalist. It's, yeah, but it's but they're like, all alone. It's yeah. called Alone. Is it a? It's a real show. Or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a Nat Geo show or a History mm. Channel show that it's is, on you can Netflix watch on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, I may watch it. Check it's it out. So yeah, good. You guys both gave up on 1883. Yeah, the Yellowstone yeah. spinoff. It was why so the, sad. Why the fuck would I watch about these fucking losers in 1883? When, when I can play, can play Red Dead Redemption. When I can play as the coolest fucking cowboy, Arthur Morgan, in Red Dead Redemption mm. 2. Locker Room Talk, brought to you by Rockstar's masterpiece, Red Dead Redemption 2. Folks, hashtag, save Red Dead online. I just got it for PS5, and I need to play with people. Gamer tag at Joe W. Gorman. That'd be pretty sick if you got like podcast listeners to yeah, come and play against that'd be you. Cool. Yeah, dude, absolutely. I'll cut that clip that for the I've Instagram. Been, okay, yeah. so he never listens to me. I'm like a good Patreon idea. Fucking go live on Twitch or whatever with your patrons. I'll figure out how to do that on my PlayStation 5. It seems better equipped mm. than my last gen Xbox One. Yeah. Maybe, uh, yeah, I don't have MLB The Show from a couple years ago, but I was going online and playing people. That could be interesting if I yeah, still fun. had it. Oh, the, I, I got it specifically to play online games with other people. Yeah. I remember you um, You got to uh, create your uh, team and whole uniform in the baseball game, and my yeah, team dude. was the Manitoba Dudes. Fuck yeah. <laughs> dude, they, have, they, have, like, they have options of like names that they could say. Yeah. And I was like, let me pick a random place in like, Manitoba, Canada, sure. And one of the options for a team name was the Dudes, and I was like, Hell yeah. well, at first I named the team the, um, the Sandlot Spartans. I like that. Like um, just because I wanted to have the logo be SS. <laughs> 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 and then surpri- I, I would start a lot of games, and the person would leave the game immediately when they uh. saw the team name. <laughs> they just see, yeah, I have to play the SS. Nah, I'm leaving. Did you make the logo even look like the SS? I did it like a version that wasn't the exact same, but close enough. You don't want to get flagged. Exactly. Right. Yeah, can't anybody um, take a joke? I mm. mean, my fucking real name is out there. My God, I can't yeah. be a fucking Nazi on the internet, too. Right. <laughs> I'm just a Nazi on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, just on the pod. Isn't yeah. that fucking Also, nice, the dude? uniforms were brown shirts. <laughs> Matt, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, yeah. dude. But the Manitoba dudes was like lime green and white. Nice. Just, yeah, bright green uniforms. So you could like Fun design name. your... Yeah. your. I'm in, dude. A lot of people just make like real teams. Mm-hmm. Um, some people would do throwback teams, which I would think of doing. Because I love like old sports history in general. Uh, but it's how I was just talking to. Um, I'm we doing did, the Negro League. So that's. I was gonna say I love like old Negro League teams, stories, and all Look that stuff. It, dude. But I can't. I feel weird doing it. Like there was a shirt that I wanted to get. It was an old Negro League shirt. The logo on the front was awesome, but on the back it said "They sacrifice so we can play." I'm like, I can't uh, wear yeah, this. <laughs> yeah, that's not your. That's not yeah. your jam. Why not? <laughs> I'm not in the we. Why not? I mean, aren't we all? I was always allowed to play. Oh, damn, really? Did they yeah. let Jewish people play? No. Um, yeah. Get the, out of here, Jew! I mean, it's this is a Catholic game! Was Sandy Koufax well, I mean, the first one? San- he was the fir- one of the first good ones. Because that's the thing. It's not like there was an epidemic of great Jewish athletes oh, they right, had to right, keep right, out of the right, league. Right, right, right. <laughs> true, true, true. Wasn't um, that the thing, like, in basketball? Like, basketball was invented by Jewish people. Very early then, NBA games yeah. is, like, all Jewish guys. I and then, like, no once, once, once they opened the, the gates, or rather... The cages. Yes. <laughs> then, uh, then the sport got a little more, let's say, colorful, athletic, and dangerous. Yeah. Mm. You're the uh, worst. What, babe? <laughs> Not on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want us to wind up like like Bobby and and Kalila? Oh, gosh. I hope not. That's what not. happens. That's what happens. You fucking podcast and you be fucking vulnerable. I don't on think the it was their podcasting I think that it was got that, in the way of their relationship. I think it was that open relationship. I think it was the openness of I it. I think Bobby just stopped laying the hammer down. Uh oh. Mm. Um. <laughs> Pressure's Uh-oh. on you, Joe. How can I ha- how can I perform sexually with a PlayStation Five in the room? That's true. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sorry, baby. Mm. Fortnite first. Yeah. Um, Almost I double one hundred on Fortnite, folks. Add me on Fortnite at Joe W Gorman. 
I remember in my Hebrew school, we had a um, uh, book report thing to do, and I loved sports, so I wanted to do a thing on a Jewish athlete. And in the library, the only one there was a guy named Mo Berg, Uh who I think he was like a spy in World War II, Mm. uh, and then played minor league baseball. I'm like, yeah, if you played minor, if you but if you played minor league baseball, you were a good enough athlete to have a book written about you in the (laughs) Jewish library. (laughs) The bar is very low for Jewish athletes. I think I think that being a spy thing was the more interesting aspect of it and i wasn't really mentioned much in my book report on him why not <laughs> uh, <laughs> you were just about the i didn't care yeah. about that as much <laughs> really that would have been so cool there have been other there was hank greenberg was a really good player mm-hmm. hall of famer who's jewish um or if he wasn't his last name was greenberg so we're claiming him anyway that's the thing jews will claim anyone anyone really? who's like, like it's weird that's always one big difference i felt with christians and jews is that christians it will say that person's a bad christian he's not yeah. one of us he oh, doesn't yeah. represent us but with Jews, somebody, if their mom is Jewish, but they call themselves Catholic, they were raised Catholic or whatever, and they get famous, would be like, they're Jew. Always, <laughs> always, <laughs> we're always. We're always trying always. to claim them. Yeah, no, totally. Mm. Yeah, Catholics and Christians will do anything to cast aside somebody that, you know, a heretic. A well, heretic, that's, that's yeah. part of it, because like the Blasphemous Bible says, bitch. like somebody breaks the rules, you cast them out. Right. Hell what yeah. does the Jewish Bible say? Seduce people and, and draw them in by any mm. means. Trick them yes. into this. Yeah. <laughs> this, the, what was it? The, I don't the think that's false, true. false prophet? What was it? Mm. The I don't know. I don't know if that's in you Genesis. You should not or have Leviticus. a false prophet. I don't believe. I'm a man of science. Yeah. I'm like Reed Richards. Yeah. Yeah. Who's Reed Richards? Don't worry about it. <laughs> a man of science. Um, uh, that's for the listeners. Mm. Try to think. Was Sandy Koufax was a big one. <laughs> um, there's been a few. There's been a. There's a, Ryan Braun got busted for taking steroids. Nice. But if you're a Jewish athlete, I think you should be able to. You already got so much working against you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to beat genetics here. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Early NBA was all Jews, and then yeah, they let black people come in. I don't think there's been a lot of uh, Julian Edelman is like the one Jewish football nice. player I could think of. Now, now speaking of basketball, Matt, how do you feel about that? That. WNBA player that's currently Brittany locked Griner. up. Brittany Griner. Yeah. Rest that's terrible. Yeah. It's fucking terrible. Yeah. They're saying now that maybe the um, hashish oil was planted. Really? Yeah. But, but the poor, I, mean, I, I pray that we do was a it trade like, for her. Were they saying that she like had a vape pen? And yeah. Then, so the whole yeah. thing was that she had a, a vape pen. One of those. One of these. This, uh, is, this will fucking get you 40 to life. Uh, no, man. I think they put to death... In Russia, in Russia, yeah. Why? But how could Putin be so cool, and then be? He needs to get on JRE. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully Biden does a trade. I might be completely for what? missing the mark. Who for um, send over a some prisoner? Prospe- we have send over some prospects. Well, what, what, what's for the prisoner Griner? first? What prisoner? Well, the last time we did a trade, or I don't know if it was the last time, but there was a trade for, um, was it with Russia, where um, it was. I think a, an American journalist and um, a Russian pilot was caught flying over with cocaine, like yeah. pounds or cocaine. what do we what do we trade when we do these trades? The person. I mean, what do we trade for the person? The person. The That's person. That's a person-to-person yeah. trade. Yeah. Like, oh, so, so like we can trade another person? Yeah. Depends so on who we if have. we have a Russian um, oh, a prisoner, Russian. Okay. You know, um, I'm sure we got millions, dude. Yeah. Honestly, dude, yeah, America is not like fucking innocent. In I this. know everyone all, thinks yeah. that. It's like no, it's like, America's it's like not Britney innocent. Britney is probably one hundred percent innocent. One hundred percent. Like even if but she is guilty, to think it's like why would anyone attack America? There's a lot of good reasons. We fucking hate America on this podcast, and we 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 beg for the day uh, where radicalites actually take the White House. Not like these fucking January six losers, but the true master race takes their rightful place. <laughs> Black people. I blacked out. What were you saying? <laughs> um, I was thinking of it in terms of trades, like the way sports teams make trades, where it's like, all right, you got Brittany Griner. What if you send you a few people with potential to? Oh, we'll, no, 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 no. We'll no, send you no. a I few like, like future that. minor leaguers uh, who like, have potential to be arrested with a vape pen in exchange for Brittany Griner. Do, do for, a, for a women's basketball player, uh, who's a great women's basketball player, we'll trade you the worst men's basketball <laughs> player. Matthew, that's a human life. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man, I would suck to be. What is she? What is she classified as? Like not, that's not a person. African American. No, a woman. <laughs> no, Kelly. no. I'm saying like, what is she called? Like a prisoner? Like prisoner of war? Or? No, not a prisoner of war. No, prisoner of war would be like if you were a soldier. Prisoner of Azkaban. That's it. Mm. Well, whatever. Um, a casualty. A casualty. A future casualty. Mm. But I don't know. She might a not lesbian. make it out. Her wife is apparently now like on social media trying to get her out because she was quiet before as she was told that her wife was told to be. Her wife and family were like, you know, don't make we don't want yeah. a lot of big, not a big There's deal, but we don't want do a lot Do you think of that's what it was? Or do you think she was like, finally, some peace and quiet. Uh, my, wa- my wife is yeah. out of the country. Oh, oh what the hell's going on? What, what the hell? Where's that nagging? Where, then, where'd yeah. it go? <laughs> Wait and a minute. After a few weeks, she yeah. was like, all right, I got to say something. She's going to come back eventually. I gotta <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every lesbian couple oh, is just totally two women it. nagging at each other. I feel like gay men are just yeah. like two guys on the couch refusing to clean. Yeah. <laughs> No, oh, I feel shit. like even in, in a lesbian couple or a gay male couple, someone's still going to be the guy and someone's going to be it's the girl. It's always masculine energy, masculine and, and female, masculine and feminine energy. That's right. always what it is. It I believe it's matter. called the alpha and the omega energy now. Right. Gender yeah, neutral. if you want to look at it that way. Yeah. The but alpha, the yin and the yang. Mm. Uh, do, do, between our relationship, who's the masculine, who's the feminine? Kelly's the masculine. Yeah. Really? You think? You're a you're a you're a clean man and I'm a dirty woman. <laughs> <laughs> you're a dirty little whore, Joe. <laughs> I try to make him a dirty little whore. He's just not interested. Mm. Ah. Man, the Bobby Kalila thing is starting right now. <laughs> it's, already, it's already starting, dude. No. Joe used to be my dirty little yeah. whore. Brendan <laughs> Schaub, don't ever try to fucking <laughs> I don't think he's have interested. my girlfriend walk you to your truck. Yeah. All right. I'm not like Bobby, dude. I have a loyal fan. My loyal fan base will 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 die for me. All right, mm. <laughs> that would be fucking cool, dude. Yeah, that would if be you would cool. be a Jim Jones. What? Would you want a cult? Would I? Jim Jones, the guy. I'd have no, a not a cult. Kool-Aid. Not people that would just like a strong ass fan base that oh, would die. Okay. But I would never ask them to do that. Right. Yeah. But, but like, it would be that thing where like someone's gonna fucking like I'm gonna kill Joe Gorman, and then like when they're about to kill me, they get shot, and then I look up at a building, like a, a fan is like looking down from a sniper rifle, giving me the thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> he had my back. That's what I want. Yeah. I was like, hey, those little those little something somethings. I think mm. you would end up more with um. What was that? The the Riddler in Batman, the newest one? Just a bunch of incels. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone rushing to the Best Buy to buy a PS5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They all only have ever had sex in the metaverse. Yeah. Yes, yes, 100%. Hmm. That metaverse, I don't know like anything about it, but it sounds like it could be good in some ways. Doesn't uh it can Doesn't be, Mark Henley rest in peace let you uh play with any of his gaming systems? Um, some, t- I mean, I don't, there's not really any of them I want to play. He has a place, the PS4 there. So when I first, mo- we first moved in, it was still the pandemic and I had a, uh, MLB account. the show and I had the NHL game. So I'd play those a bit, but those are already like a couple years old now and I haven't bought new ones. I'm, I'm just very obsessive also. So if I get a game, I like, there were days during the, that first lot I'd wake up start playing the game, maybe stop for lunch, and go to bed at night. Nice. <laughs> well, I mean, like, what else are we going to do? Yeah, yeah, but I mean... Was fa- that was so fucking fun. I can, like, oh, just do the same thing all day. So if I get a new video game, it's just going to be a lot of time away from being productive. Good, dude. I mean, you that's know, what video games are for. Yeah, I think that... Um, I kind of joke about this, but I, I know a lot of women that get mad at their boyfriends or husbands video game usage. And it's like everybody needs a way to decompress and yeah. everybody needs a way like like his video games is my housewives. Like mm. I think it's stupid. He thinks it's stupid. But I just want to fucking Housew- chill. Is housewives? That's uh, not like Bravo. Death. Like Bravo. Oh, okay. Like like just trash. All right, reality there's a show TV. called just called Housewives. Um um like the Real Housewives of like such. And oh such okay, place. gotcha. But, you know, I remember my parents used to watch Desperate Housewives. Oh, I loved Desperate Housewives. So those first couple seasons, I watched. My mom watches the housewives and was like i gotta watch my desperate housewives but she's talking is about it, like the reality uh, tv okay. show is but desperate housewives still on no no no, no. that sh- that was one of those shows that was kind of like it wasn't as good of a storyline like lost but like it started really strong and then they just kind of lost that it. was like yeah. that was ever like did you ever did you ever think a woman in her 40s could give you a boner 
Mm. That was like the huge selling yeah. point. That was like yeah. that was like right when like MILF culture was really coming. Oh, into Terry the Hatcher. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eva Longoria. And also yeah. there was uh the dude, the white guy. Um, yes. What's his name? Mike Denton. Is that his name? I don't know. Something Denton. I feel like because I remember that year he was in the celebrity softball game at the All Star game. We uh MLB does a celebrity softball game every week every year for the All Star game. Funny. Nice. And they'll be and the guy from Desperate Housewives was in it one year. <laughs> From desperate, he was al- he was also in uh, Sex in the City. Mm. Charlotte's um, yeah husband husband yes. Damn. Are you uh, are you one of those girls who's into the serial killer true crime stuff? I mean, just by default, being a girl, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just one of those things where I like documentaries is yeah. like my main form of of entertainment, um, and so s- serial killers are just like a very natural way of of you know getting into that but i also grew up watching a lot of um horror movies my mom was a big stephen king fan Mm. so lots of scary movies and so i think true crime is Mm. just fun to watch because it's just like scary movies have you ever heard of bell gunness the female serial killer did i talk about this on the podcast no but i would i love female serial. i was reading about this i was shocked that yeah there's always like uh there aren't that many female serial not, killers no. and you'll hear like a couple of them. And then I'd never heard this story. I was reading, this is like late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, it's always from then though. Yeah. Always. Yeah. So her name was bell Gunnis. She was a, uh, she was from Norway and she like grew up working on a farm. She was like this short, stocky, like five foot six, 220 pounds. She, she could take a, Joe. Yeah. She worked in a butcher shop. Damn, and that's a big bitch. Yeah. Dude. Towers over me. Yeah. And, um, she was married to her first husband and, uh, there, they had a candy shop together that burned down, but they had insurance on it. So they make all this big insurance. Pay Ooh, out. Nice. Then a couple years later, the house burns down, but they oh, had no. insurance on that. Oh, good. I think and, I heard about this bitch. Ha- and they make all the money back from the insurance. Then their kid died. Oh, Two no. kids of theirs die, but, they were adopted kids and they had life insurance policies out on both of the kids so they get this big payout they're lucky and and then her husband dies but he had a life insurance policy for three thousand dollars it was expiring got another one for two thousand dollars and there's one day where they overlap one was ending one was starting and that's the day he dies and she gets a five thousand dollar payout what luck takes the money (laughs) And goes and has a farm in Indiana. And then on this farm, she marries another guy who uh, has a kid already. And that Mm -hmm. kid, under her care, dies. Mm. Oh, no. Had a life insurance payout on it. Then shortly after that, he dies. But the other deaths were all consistent with what could have been poisoning. This one, he died because a meat grinder fell on his head. Mm. Oh, no. Um, and, uh, people kind of suspected things and talked about stuff, but it never actually went anywhere. And then she's just alone on her farm and starts putting ads out in the newspaper looking for a husband, uh, telling people to come to my farm and live with me, but I want someone who has a lot of money so we can share wealth. I don't want to just be supporting someone. And all these letters they found, she would send to these guys, convince them to take out all their money and bring it to the farm. And then they would all mysteriously disappear. Oh, no. She got greedy. Yeah. And then one day, one of the people who disappeared, his brother, is going to come to the farm to confront her. And all of a sudden, a fire breaks out on the farm. And she had three kids at this point. They're all dead. And there is a headless body found that was identified as her. The coroner later was like, this body is like three inches shorter and 50 pounds lighter than Belle Gunnis was. So She got away. No, there were rumors of people saying they saw her, but it's most likely that she is. Some people say she escaped back to Norway. Mm, um, that's pretty cool. And but yeah, after the fire breaks out, they were walking on the farm and they step into like a soft piece of land. That's like Ugh, this is weird. They dig it up. They start digging. Up. They found eleven bodies on the farm, wow. and they stopped counting after eleven. But wow. there was there's rumored wow. to be up to thirty or forty people she killed. Oh, you know, job. that's that's it. The funny thing about female serial killers is that it's all very consistent. Like the motives are usually the same. Like mm. for money, there was some other. Uh, yeah. The woman. bodies were all like butchered the same way. Yeah. You know, women, they all clean up after themselves. So. Mm. <laughs> very good at that. Yeah. No, but uh, yeah, there there's this other bitch uh, out in I think San Francisco it was. Yeah. That um, I forget her name, but they called her like the granny killer. 
because mm. she um I think she I was, heard about yeah this. It was, it's recently on Netflix I think worst roommate ever and it was the is the show and it was like this like very innocuous older looking woman that it turns out I mean spoiler alert but whatever um she was uh she had a boarding house where like people that like uh got done with the rehab needed yeah. a place to go and all these people had like social security benefits for one reason or another um and uh, just a lot of homeless people and so she would take these people in and um I, it was great like she would give back to the community she like made food for the neighborhood and everything and it turns out that she was um, bringing these people in, collecting the money from the state that they should have been getting. She was taking it as like their rent. And um, those people would just disappear because they're homeless people mm. that are like, you know, drug addicts or whatever. Like they just kind of disappear. And the clothes that she would give away to like donations and stuff were the clothes of the people she was murdering. And she was just was burying them in the backyard. Yeah, They found so many bodies yeah. in the backyard mm. it, and it was all for the same thing for money and she wasn't even an old woman she just made herself a gold she was the grand oh it, was that around the same time period like late 1800s no so or? this was in like 19 um it, it sounds like you probably get like one or one or two a century you know like yeah it was just like you know 1970s let's say 1980s. oh really okay because yeah. oh, yes. like yeah. with this with 1980s. the bell gunness i'm like how did you get away with that where it's like you know jack the ripper also was, i think the late 1800s was like it got to the point where people were gonna do more of this stuff but yeah. they didn't there was there wasn't as much of a uh, infrastructure for like detectives or police. Thank God for the Pinkertons. Yes. Yeah. Right. Thank God. That's, well, Kill as many innocent little boys in an explosion if you can keep us yeah. safe from these crazy fucking women who will kill us. Well, the Pinkertons mostly, I think, have a it's a bad reputation now because uh, like towards the end of um, Alan Pinkerton's life, the guy who founded it, he um, he was like a labor rights guy, mm. but he didn't like labor striking. Mm. So during the late eighteen hundreds, where there was all these strikes. He was like, we need to fight against this. And after he died, they got extremely violent. Really? So the Pinkertons were like, vi if you hear any stories from the late 1800s, railroad strike, Putnam, uh, Pullman strike, all these violent put downs of strikes where people are killed at these strikes. It's, it's the Pinkertons doing that. And that's kind of their reputation is uh, not as much. They stopped the plot to kill Abe Lincoln. They were the first private eyes. It's more, oh, that was like... Those were the original um, Union abusive busters. police officers. Yeah. The Union original bust, violent, yeah. loot, violent. The original uh, Antifa. Yeah. The original Derek Chauvin's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've heard it here first. Hmm. Pinkertons, you're on notice. Absolutely. Bobby Sheehan, get well soon. We miss you, buddy. Keep it going for my fiance, <laughs> Kelly Taylor, everybody. Thanks for having me, guys. This yeah. was fun. Where I'll can, plug the yeah, uh, show. Where can, where can people find you, baby girl? I <laughs> baby girl. <laughs> I have um, a podcast that's on hiatus that will come back called I Feel Fat Today. It's pretty self helpy. So if you like this podcast, maybe don't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I brought it up. But um, Joe and I run a show together where we each equally put in 50 50 percent effort effort into the show <laughs> called Seltzer and Bitters. It's every fourth Wednesday of the month. It's at, coming out. Yes. It's coming out this Wednesday, folks. So this Wednesday, July 27th is our July showcase. Um, it's at 7 p.m. at the Tiny Cupboard. Tix tickets are five dollars. The show is fun. You should and come out. Finnegan will be there. And I, I guess this time Finnegan will be there if he's alive. Honestly, Petra really like bit his face off um, when we had, you know, we're starting. There is a little bit of pool of blood. <laughs> and then um, in August, we're going to have our locker room talk, Seltzer and Bitters. So that'll be yeah. fun, too. So come out to that. More mm -hmm. details to follow. And you can follow me on social media, uh, on Instagram at hello, this is Kelly. And then you can find me on Twitter and TikTok at Modern Goth Girl. That's awesome. it. Cool. All, All right, right, folks. Thanks so much. And we'll see you next time same incel time same incel place bye